So, good day sa inyo lahat. Um, Pag-uusapan natin ngayon is yung Module 7 ng Environmental Science natin. Ang pangalan nito is yung Air Quality. So, una, ano nga ba yung Air Quality? Ito yung, kumbaga, ito yung basically na kung gaano ka dumi o kung gaano ka linis yung isang uh, atmosphere natin. Dito natin malalaman kung good air quality ba siya or isa ba siyang poor, uh, kung meron siyang poor air quality. Ano nga ba pagkakaiba ng dalawa? So pag sinabi kasi natin good air quality, um, ibig sabihin na is yung hangin natin is ma- malinis, maayos, parang fresco, ganun. So pag pin- sinabi naman natin poor air quality, ito yung parang medyo hazy, medyo mausok, medyo polluted yung uh, atmosphere or yung surroundings natin. Surrounding air natin. So next, paano nga ba natin sinusukat yung uh, air quality? So meron tayong tinatawag na air quality index. So dito, dito or yung AQI, dito na nasusukat natin kung gaano ka-polluted or kung gaano yung quality ng hangin. So makikita natin dito, meron tayong kulay green, yellow, orange, red, purple, and maroon. So, yun yung daily AQI, uh, AQI color. So, dito, bawat kulay, merong ibig sabihin yan. So, for example, ang green ay good, yellow ay moderate, and so on and so forth. So, sino gumagamit na itong AQI? Well, ang gumagamit na ito is yung mga government or yung mga iba't ibang organizations na kumukolekta ng data para maitala nila or ma-record nila yung day, uh, yung air quality index sa bawat bansa sa mundo. So, ang atmosphere natin ay alam natin merong 100 miles na uh, taas or deep. 100 miles siya. Mer- eh, meron itong thickness and volume na kayang ma- kayang ikunin yung mga chemicals at mga pot- particles na nandoon sa sa atmosphere natin. Kaya natin kaya tayong protektahan nito. Okay. Uh, tumuloy tayo sa weather patterns. Pag sinabi kasi nating weather patterns naman, ito yung uh, record or yung monitoring ng iba't ibang organizations na nakatala dito para makita kung gaano yung contaminants, kung gaano sila ka-disperse or kung gaano sila gumagalaw doon sa troposphere. So yung troposphere kasi natin, ito yung naglalaman ng 95% mass ng uh, pollutants or contaminants. Ganun. So dito sa troposphere, alam naman natin, dito tayo nagpapalipad ng aircraft. Dito tayo, dito yung pinaka mababa na atmosphere natin. Okay? So pag sinabi naman natin sa air pollution, ano nga ba yun? Meron tayong tatlong processes doon. So, yung una, manggagalang siya sa pollution source. Yung unang pollution source, ibig sabihin na ito, pwede itong maging mobile, stationary, area, at natural. So, ang pagkakaiba na ito is yung mobile, syempre, yung example na ito is yung kotse or yung mga vehicles natin na nagpo-produce ng air pollution. Uh, stationary, ito naman yung mga factories na nagpo-produce din ng smoke galing din sa ano nila, sa exhaust nila. At yung area, ito yung mga city, yung mga city sources naman na nakaka-contribute din sa air pollution. At lastly, yung natural source, ito yung mga galing sa volcanoes, saka sa mga forest fires or wildfires na nakaka-contribute din sa pollution natin. So susunod naman na sa process ng air pollution is yung movement or yung dispersion. Yung movement or yung dispersion, ito yung dito na nata-transport at saka nag, uh, dis, dito nga nag-transport, dispersion, and dis- deposition. So, ano pagkakaiba nun? Yung transport, it is basically the movement caused by a time average wind flow. Yung dispersion naman, ito yung nagre-resulta from local turbulence na naglalast, da, uh, naglalast siya less than the time used to average the transport. Tapos yung deposition processes naman, uh, dito included... Uh, yung precipitation, scavenging, and sedimentation, dito, nangyayari naman yung mga downward movements of pollutants in the atmosphere. So, pababa naman na ito sa atin. 
Okay, so yung pangatlo naman na process is yung recipient. So pag sinabi nating recipient, uh, anong pumapasok sa isipan natin? Siyempre tayo, di ba? Pero, ang ibig sabihin ng recipient muna is yung primary recipients for pollution. So, ito yung nandito yung water, air, and soil. Okay, so, bakit water, air, and soil? Siyempre, itong water, syempre, ininom natin, mapupunta din sa atin. So, in turn, recipient din naman tayo. Pwede itong makasakit kung polluted talaga yung water or yung air at saka yung soil. Lalo na sa water and air kasi ginagamit natin to palagi humihinga tayo, di ba? So, pag polluted yung air, mas mahihirapan tayong huminga, mas uh, magkakaroon tayo, mas pr uh, prone tayo sa risk and sa health hazards. So, paano nga ba minimeasure nga ulit yung air quality? Meron tayong tatlong ways or tatlong uh, processes or ideas. Kumbaga. Una is yung measurement of emissions. So, dito sa measurement of emissions, meron tayong stationary source at saka sa mobile source. So, pag stationary source, gumagamit tayo ng stock sampling. Ano nga ba yung stock sampling? Ang ibig sabihin kasi na ito is yung sa isang, uh, sa isang source, sa isang source, uh, stationary source lang sila, kumukuha ng data. So, sa so mobile source naman, dito pwede yung sa LTO, yung sa bago ka magparehistro ng kotse, yung carbon emissions mo, ganun. Ito yon yung mobile source. So, pangalawa is yung meteorological measurements. Ito yung used to measure meteorological factors, wind speed and direct, wind speed, wind direction, lapse rates, uh, and etc. So, itong meteorological instruments, uh, measurements na to, ito nga, yung kailangan natin tong i-measure yung mga factors na to para makuha natin kung gaano nga ba kung paano nga ba nagte-travel yung mga pollutants through the air para papunta doon sa recipient. So part low is yung measurement of ambient air quality kasi si ambient air quality ay correlated siya doon sa health effects of air pollution. Um, so paano nga ba ano nga ba yung mga ginagamit nating uh, uh, instruments or equipment dito sa pag-measure. Ang ginagamit natin doon is yung mobile ambient air quality monitoring station para sa ground at sa para sa space naman galing sa space is yung GOES project or yung geostationary operational environment satellites si ang gumawa nito ay si National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration or yung NOAA at saka si NASA so itong geo geostationary operational environmental satellites ito yung ginagamit para dun sa AQI So, susunod naman na reporter ay i-discuss kung ano nga ba yung measurements, kung paano nga ba yung mga measurements or yung mga computations na gagamitin natin para sa pag-measure ng air quality. Thank you. Good day guys. So, continuation. As discussed earlier, uh, ambient air quality also needs to be measured and monitored. But how? So, to monitor the quality of ambient air, we have to measure both total suspended particulate matter, or TSP, and particles with aerodynamic di diameters below 10 micrometers. So, first, what is particulate matter? So, based on previous modules, it is the sum of all solid and liquid particles suspended in air, which are hazardous. It is a complex mixture that includes both organic and inorganic particles such as dust, pollen, soot, smoke, and liquid droplets. These particles vary greatly in size, composition, and origin. For comparison, see the picture. Particles with diameters that are generally 10 micrometers and smaller are inhalable particles. So, so ito. Which penetrates through the nose by breathing. Particles with diameters that are 2.5 micrometers and smaller are fine inhalable particles. So, take a look at a single hair from your head. The average human hair is 70 micrometers in diameter, making it 30 times larger than the largest fine particle. 
which penetrates to the lungs. So, it in 2.5, 30 times known is yung uh, human hair. So, to measure this, a common device known as high volume samplers is used. So, it is a device for sampling large volumes of an atmosphere for collecting the contained particulate matter by filtration. It consists of a high cap capacity blower, a filter to collect suspended particles, and a flow rate measurement device. So, as you can see, particles smaller than 10 micron pass through the sampling head and are trapped on the filter. Dito. But yung particles larger than 10 micron is trapped dito sa may uh, impaction plate. And hindi na nakakaabot ng filter. While yung, yung blue, yan, yung air, yan, siya yung air that passes completely through the sampler and filter system. Which, uh, mamimeasure yung air flow by the flow sensor or yung flow meter. It can be fitted with a variety of filters and used to measure smaller particles and particles of a particular size. So, if yung particles are larger than 10 micrometers, uh, need niya ng mas malakas na airflow sa sampler, which is 10 times equal to uh, 16.7 liters per minute. So, as compared to 1.4 liters per minute ng TSP, the, uh, the ambient standard is more stringent than it is for TSP. So, high wall sampler use gravimetric analysis, which uh, yung filter is minimize niya before and after ng operation ng sampler. The, uh, the difference between these weights is known as the weight of particulates or yung particles na nakolekta or naipon sa filter. Katulad ng sa filter, airflow also should be measured by the flow meter at the beginning or end of the test period. Uh, yung which is usually calibrated in cubic feet of air per minute. Yan. So, ito yung flow meter. Ayun. Uh, then, yung uh, value ng airflow is uh, average siya ng dalawang uh, nung beginning and end ng test period. So, high vol samplers measure the particulate concentration known as the total suspended particles and express as micrograms for a 24 micrograms per cubic meter for a 24 hour period normally as part of 6 day cycle so usually 24 hours yung ginagamit na time sa pag uh, sa pag test ng sample so example 1 a clean filter is found to weigh ano, to weigh 10 grams so ito yung initial initial weight ng filter. Then, after 24 hours, yung nga, uh, yung filter plus dust weighs 10.10 .10 grams. So, ito yung final, uh, final weight ng filter. Then, yung airflow at start and end of the weight of the test was 60 and 40 cubic feet per meter. So, ito yung initial airflow, then yung final airflow rate. What is the concentration of particulate matter? So, yung concentration of particulate matter is yung TSP. So, una, uh, kunin muna natin yung weight ng particulates or yung dust. So, sabi nga, yung difference ng, ng start and end. So, ito yung uh, final, final weight minus yung initial weight. Then, ta times natin sa micrograms. Co-convert natin siya sa micrograms. So, 10.10 .10 minus 10 is 0.10 grams. Then, cancel natin to. Times natin siya sa 10 to positive 6. So, 0 0.1 times 10 to, to, the, to the positive 6 micro, micrograms. Ito yung weight ng particulates. 
Next naman is yung average airflow. So, sabi nga, if, uh, yung initial and yung final na airflow rate is pagpa plus, then i divide sa 2. Which 60 plus 40 is 100, divided by 2 is 50 cubic uh, cubic per feet, cu cubic feet per minute. Then next is yung total air through the filter or yung volume ng air sa filter, yung mga nag, yung nag pass through. So, yung uh, average airflow natin na nakuha is co-convert at uh, uh, ito times natin siya sa minute per, uh, 60 minutes per hour para makancel yung minute. Yan. Then, ito times natin sa 24, 24 hour per day para makancel yung hour. Then, ito times natin siya sa 1 day para makancel yung day. So, 50 times 60 times 24 times 1 is equal to 72,000 cubic feet. Which is, uh, yung feet, cubic feet is kailangan pang i-convert since cubic meter yung kailangan sa TSP. So, ita times natin siya sa 0 0.0283 uh, cubic meter per cubic feet. So, cancel natin to Then, uh, 2,038 meter cu uh, cubic meter ang total air natin. So, para makuha yung total suspended particulate matter, i-divide natin yung weight particulates, then yung total air through the filter. So, we can get 49 mic micrograms per cubic meter. So, gets ba? Next. Next, uh, another device that we can also use is cascade impactor, which is used to measure fine particles, including respira uh, respirable particles than 1, 1 1.0 micrometers in diameter, which are small enough to penetrate the lung. So, it consists of four tubes. So, uh, it dep but depending on the an analyst or user, yung dami ng tubes. Uh, yung dami ng tube since since if mas uh, depende yun if mas need niya mag collect ng particular size since itong tubes ay according to the size of particles so as you can see the larger particle impacted for uh, impacted on the lower velocity velocity stage so yung uh, below 10 micrometers yan dito then, yung smaller particles pass on and are collected at a higher velocity. So, pabilis siya ng pabilis since uh, lumiliit na yung particles. So, ito yung stage N since uh, depende yan kung gusto mong dagdagan ng size, of, size ng particles. So, next. Some particle, uh, particle measuring devices are usually fitted with an automatic computer input and recording arrangement. So, ito yung example ng computer-assisted particle or CAPS monitor, which is a combination of a high-vol sampler and a computer recorder. So, uh, this is used to obtain particle size measurement, which also images can be retained and replayed for additional analysis. And lastly, na uh, nephelometer. So, uh, another device that use the scattering of light to measure the size and number of particles in a given air sample. This is best used to determine the amount of particulate matter in different size fractions. So, ang sabi na doon, yeah, minimeasure niya intensity ng, la ng light ng par par fine particles in the air. So, and the scattered light intensity is proportional to the concentration of suspended particles in the air. So, makikita niyo yun dito sa equation natin. So, yung intensity of, intensity of scattered light is equal to constant times intensity ng uh, incident light times concentration ng suspended particles. So, ito yung uh, diagram. Pero, meron tayong mas so, yung 
fine particles na nag-interfere with visibility by scattering light is known, uh, usually known as haze. So, ito yung masyadong harmful na sa health natin. So, the scattered light intensity is measured at a 90 degree angle from the from the incident light. So, ito yung incident light. Yeah. The instrument can be calibrated either in units of percent visibility decrease or in units of micrograms per cubic meter. So, ito yung 90 degrees. So, makikita natin, yung light source is nag-emit ng light pass through the lens to the sample. Yung sample so, sa sample cell, nandyan yung mga particles. The, the suspended particles will scatter the light. So, ito yung sa, yan, sa angle na yan. And dito yung scattered na light. Which are measured by the detector. So, good morning sa inyo lahat. I'm Vincent Jan Anselmo from VSA 2-7. And I'm here to discuss module number 7. Uh, particularly the part of aviation and air quality. So, based sa title ng ating presentation, meron tayong dalawang variables. First one is yung aviation and second is yung air quality. Meron tayong third variable na palaging na-associate when it comes to aviation, which is ito yung clues natin. Uh, the infamous Concord and the problem of sonic booms, which causes noise pollution which is yun yung ating third variable. So, based dito sa mini-meme, madalas na binibigyan ng attention ng mga tao is yung noise pollution. Pero, we should, not only, we should always not forget na kailangan din natin bigyan ng equal attention yung air quality when it comes to aviation. So, next is... Let me introduce to you uh, the International Civil... Aviation Organization, or ICAO, uh, meron silang mga ginawang certification limits <clears throat> when it comes sa mga bagong engines. For, uh, for example, the General Electric GA9X engine na madalas na ginagamit sa Boeing 777X. So, yung standards na nakapaloob dito sa certification limits na to covers the following. First is yung hydrocarbons, which ang example natin is methane, ethane, propane, and such. Second is nitrogen oxides, or madalas nakikita sa emissions. Third is carbon monoxide, and fourth is our smoke emissions. So, to do this, to discover these standards, uh, sinasa ilalim yung ating engine sa engine testing bed to to check para malaman natin yung performance ng ating engines basing on one cycle that I'll be discussing in the next slide. Uh, this is yung landing and takeoff cycle or LTO cycle. So yung ating landing and takeoff cycle is nahati siya sa into four phases. First is yung approach, second is yung taxiing, third is yung takeoff, and fourth is yung climbing. So, dito sa figure, makikita natin na pag nag-start tayo sa approach, yung 4 minutes is yung time it takes for the aircraft to descend from 3,000 feet above, uh, above sea level towards the ground at 30% rush settings. Next phase is yung ating taxiing phase. Ito yung papunta sa terminal, waiting for passengers to board and before lining up to take off on the runway. Uh, ang time limit natin dito is usually around 26 minutes at 7% thrust settings. Third phase is yung our takeoff phase, which happens around 0 0.7 minutes at 100% thrust settings. And then ating fourth phase is yung climbing phase, which happens on 2.2 minutes at 85% thrust settings. So, itong mga numbers na to yung madalas na kinoconsider when it, when, kapag pinag-aaralan yung LTO cycle ng isang engine. 
So, for example, meron tayo ditong CFM 56-7B engine result, uh, emission test result, which is yung engine na ginagamit for Boeing 737 new generation aircrafts. So, makikita natin dito is yung mode, take, yung phases natin, yung takeoff, climb, approach, and steady or idle, or yung habang gihintay. Yung, ma yung max thrust natin, 100% sa takeoff, 85% sa climbing, 30% sa descent or approach, and 7% for idle. Yung time na given din kanina, 0.7 minutes, 2.2, 4, and 26. And dito sa bandang right side ng table is yung results. And ito yung nit nitrogen oxides, ito yung hydrocarbons, and yung carbon monoxide emissions in kilograms. So, since in-implement tong LTO cycle when it comes to studying newer engine aircrafts, uh, ito yung mga naging noticeable results. First is yung nitrogen oxide emission, yung ng mga bagong engines, is lessened by about 40%. Second, nagkaroon ng reduc uh, major reduction in carbon, mon carbon monoxide and hydrocarbon emissions. Uh, this is all in credit to the advancements in newer engine technologies, reduced fuel consumption, and modified fuel con composition. So next, since nabanggit natin yung apat kanina na standards for uh, testing, papasok naman tayo sa air quality emission sources. Uh, this picture is the Congonias Airport from Sao Paulo in Brazil, which is notoriously known for being an airport located in the heart of a city. So, the Environmental Protection Agency of the United States have created these standards, the National Ambient Air Quality Standards, to, to specify the accept, uh, acceptable levels of different criteria pollutants. Ang ating pollutants will be described into two areas. First is yung attainment area or yung acceptable level of a pollutant. And second is yung non-attainment area or yung mga kailangan ng special effort to become compliant dun sa ating attainment area. Uh, next, before tayo mag-delve deeper dun sa sources, let me highlight first na yung aircraft and ground equipment emissions consist of the following. 70% of carbon dioxide and 29% of water vapor or halos 99%. Pero these are not a major concern from an air quality perspective. Yung ating pagtutuunan ng pansin ngayon is yung primary pollute, yung anim na primary pollutants or yung emission sources. First is yung particulate matter or PM or the smoke. This comes from a byproduct of jet fuel combustion and secondary aerosols such as sulfates and nitrates that will form through physical and chemical processes in the atmosphere. Second is yung ating nitrogen oxi oxides where nitric oxides and nitrogen dioxide form from jet fuel combustion. Third is yung ating unburned hydrocarbons or UHC or volatile organic compounds, VOC. Ito yung mga compounds that arise from incomplete combustion of fuel. Fourth is ozones or O3. Ito yung secondary form ng ating nitrogen oxides and unburned hydrocarbons. Fifth is yung sulfur oxides which comes from sulfur and fuel. Sixth is yung carbon monoxide or CO. This also comes from incomplete combustion of fuel. So ano nga ba yung mga possible effects ng mga primary pollutants na to? So dito sa ating table, makikita na ang primary health effect ng particulate matters on the ating smoke is premature mortality, aggravated respiratory and car cardiovascular disease, and lung function impairment. Next is for ating nitrogen oxides, lung irritation, and lower resistance to respiratory infections. Sa ating UHCs, IN respiratory tract infections, headaches, dizziness, or memory imp impairment. Sa ating ozones, uh, lung function impairment, 
lower resistance to respiratory infections. And for at, sa ating carbon monoxide, aggravation of cardiovascular diseases. So this concludes our discussion when it comes to aviation and air quality in environmental science. Thank you for listening. So good morning. I am Ivan Esman. I'll be um, reporting about the measuring air quality and its impact. So air quality health impacts are assessed by using a concentration response function or dose response function. Data presented by the graph will be coming from the different AQI stations and the data coming from the AQI stations are taken uh, by its average. So this is an example of a concentration response func function. So it is, we are, as we can see, uh, it is a graph of a function that shows the relationship between two elements. This, uh, this sample concentration response function was taken from a study in Milan, Italy, where they studied the relationship of air quality index scores to the, uh, to the data gathered by the different AQI in particulate matter of having 10 micrometer in, the, in diameter and 15 micrometer in diameter. So for the for graph A, for example, we have the densities of the particulate matter having 15 micrometer in diameter and the, the percentage of prevalence bronchitis. As we can see, the as the Density increases also the percentage of bronchitis also increases. So for air quality indexing, uh, what we have here is a example, a sample map of the air quality index map of the of Metro Manila from the study of UP Diliman. The map is generated by using of spatial and temporal allocation by, with appropriate dispersion map. The data gathered from the API, AQI stations are using the different, uh, different equations. Uh, medyo complicated na equations to, to generate the different variations of uh, the AQIs uh, gathered. So, Air quality indexing, we have the we have its scoring, uh, scoring method or showing how bad uh, the quality of air. So it depends. De it depends on the country. So we have the Canada's air quality health index. It has, it has a scoring of one to ten, with above ten indicating a plus sign. So the as you can see in the table below, we have the health risk, risk, the air quality health index, and the health messages. So the health messages are determined by the local health units or the government's national health agency. So example, we have the air quality uh, health index of having a score of 1 to 3. We have, the, we have a health risk of low for the population at risk or these are maybe the vulnerable or the or people with comorbidities or having lung related illnesses they can enjoy their usual outdoor activities and for the general population the ideal air quality is good for outdoor activities so for India, we have uh, six categories of AQI. Um, we have the good, satisfactory, moderately populate, uh, polluted, poor, very poor, and severe. Ang tawag naman ng score ng indexing nila is the National Air Quality Health Index. So these are the values, uh, the values, the values of AQI and their associated health impacts. Uh, the associated health impacts uh, 
vary from place to place. It depends on the uh, quality of life of the people there. Hindi pwede na, uh, it could be na pareho tayo ng health impacts, uh, identified health impacts with other countries, but it's not the same for, it is not applicable for other uh, API or AQI scoring. So for United States, we have the National Ambient Air Quality Standards under the EPA, uh, identified by the EPA. So the AQI score is based on the five criteria pollutants regulated under the Clean Air Act. So for the left, we have the table for the AQI score in its corresponding category and the 24-hour average concentration of particulate matter having 2.5 micrometer diameter and concentration. So in, the, uh, in the left and for the right, we have the table for particulate matter for 10 micrometer in diameter. So, in this table, it is the identified, uh, identified pollutants by the NOx. So we have the carbon monoxide, the lead, the carb nitrogen dioxide, ozone, the particulate pollution or the particulate matter molecule diameters and the sulfur dioxide. So this table here shows the different concentration levels eh, corresponding its AQI value and category. So this is the this is the equation used by the EPA or generated by the EPA to identify the air quality index or or converting the concentration levels to the air quality index. So air, airport level air quality mitigations. So the ICAO has identified four strate strategic categories for emission reduction or air quality mitigation. First, they identify regulatory category, which is uh, stated by the stated in the laws and regulations of a certain jurisdiction. Technical category, it is the technology to be used or associated with emission characteristics. Third is operational. This is the measure that measure or measures that the the, the operator would like to implement, it could be the airline, the airport, tenants, or other entity. For, and for the economic, it could be subsidies or allowances or taxing aviation-related emissions. So for the uh, economic, uh, for taxing the related emissions, uh, some countries, they tax the emission produced by certain airlines, then this uh, tax generated are to be used to are to be used for environmental protection projects. So this is an example of a air quality uh, air quality uh, example of emission reduction measures. So for the source group, we have the aircraft under the uh, regulatory category. We have the ICAO, ICAO, engine emission standards <coughs> as adopted, uh, APU operating restrictions. For the technical or the infrastructure, the general air airport layout, we have, the, uh, we have also the high-speed runway turn-offs, paral parallel taxiways, flow management. And, and for the operational, so engine startup, the, uh, how they start their engines, improve, uh, scheduling improvement, single or reduced engine taxiing. Uh, this could be observed on ATR aircrafts where during taxi, they, the, they are only using the left or right engine. 
So aircraft towing, reduced APU use, derated or reduced thrust, engine washing, use of alternative jet fuel, uh, and for the economics uh, set by the uh, set by aviation authorities. So in conducting and uh, a, before uh, doing a process or, or mitigation an evaluation must be done so an evaluation of positive and negative results of the implementation of measures is recommended evaluation sh should include the following so a technical feasibility b economic reason reasonableness c environment of benefits and d uh, inter uh, potential interdependencies so for technical feasibility, so the anticipated technology to be used for the mitigation must be available and robust. Technology must have been applied to somewhere. So the whether you mga uh, technologies under research and development as it could drive the cost higher and is could not be feasible. So second, we have the economic reasonableness. Cost effectiveness of the implementing measures should be taken into consideration. Costs pro from the implementing measures should be reasonable for the anticipated benefit. So since uh, airline, an airline is a business, uh, make sure that uh, the created uh, mitigation cannot hurt or drove the, uh, drive the airlines away from your area, therefore killing your eco local economy. So third, we have the environment, environmental benefits. Benefits of reduced emissions should be quantified or reasonably estimated. These should be set in regulation to the overall airport emissions and the contribution of airport emissions to the surrounding area. So the main purpose of measures or the mitigation measures is to uh, protect or preserve the surrounding environment. So what's the use of, of gen creating mitigation if it has no environmental benefits. So lastly, we have the potential interdependen interdependencies, evaluation for potential conflicts with other environmental priorities, such as noise reduction. So that would be all. Good day. I am Patricia Antoinette Otapel, and I will be discussing the different airport level air quality mitigations. As we all know, the aviation industry has been a big contributor to the degradation of air quality. Airport and aircraft flight operations can both affect air pollution. Ngayon, paano nga ba ina-address ng aviation industry ang mga problems nito regarding air quality? So, through airport-level air quality mitigations, yung air quality impacts na dala ng aviation industry is pwedeng ma-reduce in a number of ways. Una is through operational procedures. In the figure shown below, yung mga items na may nakasulat na A is nagpapakita ng operational mitigations na pwedeng gawin to reduce the air quality impacts of aviation. Specifically, may different means na pwedeng gawin during the descent and descent phase of an aircraft para ma-reduce yung air quality impacts nito. Sa airport grounds naman is meron din. So, Ano nga bang goal ng operational procedures? Ang main focus dito is to reduce yung time na nakabukas yung engine to reduce fuel burn and emissions. Some practices that are implemented for this is, una, yung surface congestion management. Dito sa surface congestion management, ang ginagawa is nire-reduce yung number ng aircrafts na pwede mag-operate at a given time. This also improves the efficiency of managing aircrafts on the ground. 
by adapting the surface congestion management, yun nga, since onti lang yung aircrafts na nag operate at one time, mas nabibigyan sila ng pansin at mas smooth yung takbo ng pag dito. Unlike kapag marami na minsan nagkaka-aberya or nagkaka-problem sa pag-accommodate sa departure ng aircrafts. Next is single engine taxi. Tito, nililimit into one engine lang ang ginagamit for taxiing. Sunod is yung paggamit ng tugs or electric tugs sa pagtow ng aircraft para hindi na sila gumamit ng engines. Next is yung paglagay ng restrictions sa pagtest ng engines. Sunod naman is yung preferential runway assignments or yung pag-assign ng mga runway na gagamitin for a given time, per period. Sunod is yung modification ng airfield design to optimize and reduce taxiing ta- distances and time. And lastly is yung paglimit ng use ng APUs. So as you can notice, yung goal ng lahat ng operational procedures na to is to reduce yung paggamit ng engines para ma-reduce yung fuel burn and emissions that contribute to air pollution. Next is emissions charges. So, dito sa emissions charges, ang ginagawa is charge yung airports based sa air quality emissions nila. Dito, ang ginagawa is nagpapataw sila ng fees or taxes sa mga polluters. Ngayon, how does this work? So, merong central body na nagsiset ng certain allowances for emissions. etong allowances na to yung nagdidictate ng limit ng emissions. So, kapag gustong i-increase ng isang organization yung emission limits nila, pwedeng mag and sell yung mga polluters ng allowances nila. This then encourages the polluters to be more cost-effective para ma-meet yung required na reduction nila. So basically, the more pollution you generate, syempre mas malaki yung babayaran mo. So by the use of emissions charges, mas nahihikayat yung mga operators to work hard para malesen yung emissions ng aircrafts nila. Lastly is airport authority policies. In this procedure, nag implement yung airports ng policies para ma-reduce yung emissions sa mga ground operations nila. Included din dito yung pag-improve ng mga equipment na ginagamit sa airport grounds into equipment na gumagamit ng alternative fuels or power sources na may less impact sa air quality. Another means din is to improve yung fuel storage and distribution para malesen yung effects ng fuel vapor sa air quality. So that's it po for our report on air quality. Thank you very much.